Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering diversity disaster as massive plagiarism scandal expands at Harvard. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from Breitbart, DEI disaster. Harvard plagiarism scandal deepens with allegations against diversity administrator. From the New York Post, Harvard's diversity chief hit with 40 plagiarism accusations in wake of Claudine Gay scandal. Claudine Gay is the former president of Harvard who was taken down for her plagiarism. I know it's difficult to believe, but the diversity chief who was hit with 40 plagiarism accusations at Harvard is actually a different person than this diversity administrator who was also hit with plagiarism accusations. It's everywhere at Harvard, and it's not just in the diversity departments. They also have it in their cancer research. They're literally affecting cancer research with this. From Breitbart, more Ivy League fakery. Top Harvard cancer researchers accused of scientific fraud affecting 37 studies. Those scientific studies that they do are the basis for treatments. They are the basis for other medical professionals and other industry professionals to try to come up with things like cancer treatments, cures, things to help people who are suffering. And they're abusing their research with fraud? Yes, yes they are. Coming from Breitbart, DEI disaster, Harvard plagiarism scandal deepens with allegations against diversity administrator. Harvard's plagiarism problem continues as the spotlight shines on other faculty members at the Ivy League University in the wake of the school's former president, Claudine Gay, being ousted amid dozens of plagiarism accusations being unearthed and multiple anti-Semitism scandals. Plagiarism allegations against Harvard Extension School DEI Administrator Shirley Green involving more than 40 passages of her 2008 dissertation have been filed with the Ivy League institution according to a report by City Journal. They need to check people's work a lot more carefully. Moreover, Harvard University Chief Diversity Officer Sherry Ann Charleston was also accused of plagiarism in a new complaint, which alleges that Charleston claimed credit for her husband's work. Additionally, top cancer researchers at Harvard have been recently accused of scientific fraud affecting 37 studies. The researchers are also accused of manipulating data images with simple methods such as copy and paste and Adobe Photoshop. As for the latest allegations against Green, who is a Title IX coordinator affiliated with the Office for Gender Equity, she's worked to advance the concept of so-called diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And what does a Title IX coordinator do? A Title IX coordinator prevents and remedies sexual harassment in schools and is essential to ensuring a safe environment in which students can learn. Title IX coordinators are in the best position to prevent harassment and to lessen the harm to students if, despite their best efforts, acts of sexual harassment do occur. The full complaint obtained by City Journal raises serious questions about Green's scholarship and academic integrity. In one instance, Green appears to take words, phrases, passages, and almost entire paragraphs verbatim directly from academic Janelle Lee Wu's 2004 dissertation, Chinese American Female Identity without including appropriate attribution or quotation. In Wu's dissertation, she writes the following. Stage two, white identification is a direct consequence of the increase in significant contact between the individual and white society. This stage entails the sense of being different from other people and not belonging anywhere. The individual's self-perception changes from neutral positive to negative, and she begins to internalize the belief systems of white society. Consequently, the individual does not question what it means to be Asian American. The individual alienates herself from other Asian Americans while simultaneously experiencing social alienation from her white peers. Only when the individual seeks to, quote, acquire a political understanding of her social status does she enter into the next stage. Green's work, meanwhile, reads this way. White identification is a direct response of the increase in significant contact between the individual and white society. Individuals in this stage have the sense of being different from other people and not belonging anywhere. Their self-perception changes from neutral positive to negative, and they begin to internalize the belief systems of white society. Consequently, the individual fails to question what it means to be Asian American and alienates themselves from other Asian Americans while simultaneously experiencing social alienation from their white peers. 
In order to move to the next stage, the individual must acquire a political understanding of social status. While the duplicated sections of Wu's work are italicized, proper citation was not included. Green also reportedly lifts most of an entire table on racial ethnic identity development models without acknowledging the source. Another example in the complaint compares Green's dissertation with a passage from Developing Leadership Skills for Diversity by Anthony Antonio. A section of Antonio's paper reads as follows. Aston found that independent of students entering characteristics in different types of college environments, frequent interracial interaction in college was associated with increases in cultural awareness, commitment to racial understanding, commitment to cleaning up the environment, and higher levels of academic development, such as critical thinking skills, analytical skills, general and specific knowledge, and writing skills, and satisfaction with college. Very similarly, a section from Ms. Green's dissertation, meanwhile, reads as follows. Aston found that independent of students entering characteristics and different types of college environments, frequent interracial interaction in college was associated with increases in cultural awareness, commitment to racial ethnic understanding, commitment to cleaning up the environment, and higher levels of academic development, such as critical thinking skills, analytical skills, general and specific knowledge, and writing skills, and satisfaction with college. Almost exactly the same. While Green cited the source, she failed to include quotation marks. Notably, the entire paragraph is copied verbatim, with only the word ethnic being added to it. The complete complaint reportedly calls out more than three dozen other examples of Green allegedly taking language from other scholars. On to Harvard's diversity chief from the New York Post, Harvard's diversity chief hit with 40 plagiarism accusations in wake of Claudine Gay's scandal. Harvard University's chief diversity and inclusion officer has been hit with dozens of plagiarism allegations tied to her academic work including one claim she failed to properly cite her own husband's study. The Ivy League school was handed an anonymous complaint on Monday listing at least 40 examples of alleged plagiarism by Sherry Ann Charleston dating back to 2009, a decade before she joined Harvard, according to the Washington Free Beacon. The allegations, which include failing to properly cite another scholar's work and not referencing them in footnotes, come just weeks after Harvard University President Claudine Gay resigned from her top post after becoming embroiled in a scandal over charges that she plagiarized work and her handling of anti-Semitism on campus. According to the Washington Free Beacon, which conducted its own analysis of the complaint, Charleston allegedly quoted or paraphrased a dozen scholars without adequate attribution in her 2009 dissertation at the University of Michigan. The complaint also alleges that Charleston ultimately took credit for a study that her husband, LeVar Charleston, currently the University of Wisconsin-Madison's Deputy Vice Chancellor for Diversity and Inclusion, wrote in 2012. And that's this guy. That alleged instance of plagiarism came after Charleston rehashed large portions of her husband's paper in a peer-reviewed article they co-authored in 2014, according to the complaint. The 2014 article, published in the Journal of Negro Education, had the same findings, method, and survey subject descriptions included in Charleston's husband's original paper, The Complaint Charges. Quote, you cannot just republish an old paper as if it's a new paper, Lee Jussim, a social psychologist at Rutgers University, told the outlet. If you do, that is not exactly plagiarism, it's more like fraud. In addition to Harvard, the complaint was reportedly filed with the University of Michigan and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Charleston, a historian, joined Harvard as the school's first chief diversity officer in late 2020 after holding a similar role at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And maybe the worst of all of this is the cancer study abuse. Coming from Breitbart, more Ivy League fakery. Top Harvard cancer researchers accused of scientific fraud affecting 37 studies. Top cancer researchers at Harvard have been accused of scientific fraud affecting 37 studies. The researchers are also accused of manipulating data images with simple methods such as copy and paste and Adobe Photoshop. The Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, an affiliate of Harvard Medical School, is retracting six scientific studies and seeking to correct 31 others that were published by its top researchers, including the hospital's CEO, according to a report by Ars Technica. Data sleuth Sholto David and his colleague on PubPeer, an online forum for researchers to discuss publications, reportedly brought forward the allegations on January 2nd when David posted a lengthy list of possible data manipulation from DFCI researchers to his research integrity blog for better science. In his blog post, David pointed out several data figures that appeared to feature pixel-for-pixel -pixel duplications. Researchers are accused of manipulating images of data that include what are known Western blots used to see proteins in a complex mixture. 
The allegations are against DFCI President and CEO Lori Gilcher, Executive Vice President and COO William Hahn, Senior Vice President for Experimental Medicine Irene Gobriel, and Harvard Medical School Professor Kenneth Anderson. Moreover, all four of the implicated researchers have faculty appointments at Harvard Medical School, which means they're teachers. DFCI Research Integrity Officer Barrett Rollins responded to the allegations telling the Harvard Crimson that the school is, quote, committed to a culture of accountability and integrity, and that every inquiry about research integrity is examined fully. Rollins also noted that David had contacted DFCI with allegations of data manipulation involving 57 studies, adding that the Institute's internal review found that there are 38 papers in which DFCI researchers, quote, have primary responsibility for the potential data errors. Now, the Institute is retracting six studies and contacting specific scientific publishers to correct 31 others, bringing the total to 37 affected studies so far. Meanwhile, the 38th remaining study in question is still under review. Of the remaining 19 studies in question, three were cleared of allegations and 16 were determined to have had the possibly manipulated data collected in labs that were outside the DFCI. Rollins told the Harvard Crimson that those studies are still under investigation. Rollins also insisted that finding false data and manipulated images is not necessarily evidence of an author's intent to deceive, and that the Institute has yet to determine if any scientific misconduct has occurred. Quote, that conclusion can only be drawn after a careful fact-based examination, which is an integral part of our response, Rollins said. Our experience is that errors are often unintentional and do not rise to the level of misconduct. I think it's good, actually, that they are thorough about making sure, like, was this literally deliberate? Was there a mistake made? They should go through a detailed process because, look, people will lose their careers over this potentially, or they'll lose their position. They could lose a pension. Who knows what happens to these people? So there should be a thorough process. But if they're found to be manipulating cancer research data studies with Adobe Photoshop and sketchy copy and paste moves on data, yeah, they should get in trouble for it. I always thought that Harvard was a legitimate institution with very serious people doing excellent work, educating and training the future leaders of tomorrow. It doesn't feel like that anymore. Maybe it never was that way. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.